So last time, if you recall, we got started on basic assembly. Um, you can see here the uh, fully assembled cockpit tub. Now we're going to get started on painting. As I referred in the last video, uh, the instructions call for most of the interior to be painted with uh, Tamiya's spray can color AS12, uh, which is bare metal silver. We're going to be working with uh, their conventional acrylic bottled uh, XF16 uh, flat aluminum because it's a little easier to work with and um, I'd rather do it with my airbrush than with a, with a spray can for this type of work anyway. So let's get started. Now we've already talked a bit uh, in, a, in a previous video about uh, thinning paints. Now we've got uh, our flat aluminum paint here. Now I'm just going to transfer it into the paint bottle. There. Not a huge amount there, but we won't need much. Um, when it comes to Tamiya metallic colors, I find a ratio of about two parts paint to one part thinner is usually about optimal. But um, I've been doing this for a while, so I've kind of learned how to eyeball it. <clears throat> and then I've got my trusty paint stirrer. And then just give it a quick, uh, quick stir, making sure to get it very, very thoroughly mixed. And once you've got your airbrush ready, attach your paint bottle. So now that we've got uh, our uh, paint prepared and our airbrush ready, it's time to do a quick little test spray to make sure that the uh, paint to thinner ratio is correct and that uh, the airbrush is working correctly. Everything's looking good. Now, once upon a time, I fashioned together these uh, little gator clips on, uh, on rods that I like to use to hold my parts while I'm painting. Um, it's uh, an inobtrusive way to, uh, to hold the part at uh, odd angles without having to get your fingers right into it. Um, these gator clips, they're not very expensive. Uh, go to any electronics supply store and you can probably get a package of about two dozen of them for a couple dollars. And um, the stick here, this is actually just an old piece of, uh, of uh, a plastic runner that uh, I snapped off. Um, alternatively, what I, what I do sometimes is, uh, this is just a small piece of, of uh, balsa wood doweling. And um, they're surprisingly sturdy uh, for, uh, for like heavy parts. While the plastic actually has a tendency to flex under uh, under heavier model parts. So I tend to use the uh, the, the wood doweling uh, rods for heavier parts. Now we're gonna start with the cockpit tub. The inside uh, the instructions call for XF63 uh, which is fine except that the outside is calling for uh, the the metallic silver. So I'm actually going to paint the silver portion first because this is another one of those order of assembly things that uh, that will come to you with time. You got to learn when to sp when to paint what color first. And in this case, like I said, I'm going to paint the metallic color first because a it's lighter, uh, it's a lighter color, so it'll be easier to spray over without uh, influencing the top coat. And b it'll be easier to mask because this is basically just a simple round shape, I could just apply masking tape directly to the entire external surface and uh, that'll leave the inside uh, easy to paint um, once, uh, once that's ready to go. There. See now I've, uh, I've painted the first coat of the, uh, the metallic silver color. Um, it's always wise to do many thin coats over a single thick coat because as I explained in uh, a previous episode, the thicker the coat you spray, the more likely you're going to end up with puddles or runs. And uh, you don't want either of those. Metallic colors are a little more forgiving. Um, they do tend to settle down a lot easier, I find, but it's just a good habit to get yourself into. So we'll, uh, we'll come back to this after I've painted the rest of the metallic parts and we'll do a second coat. So 
So there you can see that is uh, the cockpit tub uh, all uh, painted up nice and shiny. Um, I went ahead and uh, painted a few other parts that were likewise going to be the same metallic silver in addition to, to just the interior parts such as the uh, uh, the intake uh, fans for the engines, uh, the landing gear bays in the wings, uh, which you can see here, as well as um, all the interior sidewalls for the fuselage. Um, so that's pretty much all of the metallic silver that's going to be needed for this entire kit. That's another thing that, uh, that I, I want to try to get across is to develop a, a method of painting that uh, makes use of the most efficient use of your time. Now, unfortunately, I actually made a bit of a goof. Um, this is the, uh, the nose weight. Um, I talked a bit about it in, uh, in uh, the breakdown video. Um, it forms the uh, part of the landing gear bay in the nose. Now, it is made of die cast metal, and as a result, needs to be uh, needs a coat of primer before I can paint it with acrylic colors, or the the paint will never adhere permanently. Um, and I forgot to do that before uh, before getting out my metallic silver. So I'm gonna have to go out and do another coat or. Uh, bust out my silver again later on in the build um, to, uh, to paint this uh, again. Um, so, you know, that's just another thing to work out when you're breaking down a kit before getting started on it is, you know, figuring out what colors to use and when, in what order, and what can be painted all at the same time. So as to save yourself having to to having to do what I'm going to have to do, um, being, you know, pull out the same color over and over and over again, you know. But, you know, it happens, you know, nobody's perfect. Um, but, uh, you know, you're, you're, you learn, you know, you learn from your mistakes. So every model is a new learning experience. Uh, in addition, uh, I also painted some of the gunmetal parts um, which, to my knowledge, uh, looking through the instructions, the only gun metal in the entire kit that needs to be airbrushed is the guns. Um, not surprising, the guns would be painted gun metal. Um, now, I used the, uh, my gator clips. Uh, I forgot to mention before, when I'm using my gator clips, I like to find somewhere inobtrusive on the part. Um, you know, somewhere out of the way that's not going to be visible where I can grab them. And... Uh, and, uh, and paint them from. So I'm not going to have to paint one coat and then let it dry, detach it from the gator clip, and then paint the other coat on the other side. So I could, I, this way I can just do the entire thing at once. And in this case, I, uh, I painted, uh, I grabbed the barrel uh, because the barrel fits through the little openings in, uh, in the front bulkhead and won't be vis visible. But otherwise, you know, there's a little uh, a little peg on the bottom. You probably can't quite see it. Um, there, maybe now. There's a little peg on the bottom I could have grabbed alternately. Or there's always somewhere that you can grab that's uh, that's not going to be very visible. But um, apart from that, all that's really left is uh, to paint the inside of the cockpit and. Um, a few other odds and ends with the uh, the, the XF63 German Grey. Um, but I'm going to let this sit and dry for a little bit and I'll get back to that later on this evening. Remember how I said a little earlier that uh, the easier way to go about painting a cockpit would be to paint the outside of the tub first, then mask, and then paint the inside? Well, she's masked and uh, ready to be painted. And so that is one painted cockpit tub. Um, I could have done some more complicated paint effects, like done some uh, some pre-shading, um, but you know I'm really trying to stick with the basics. I mean I will do probably a wash um, to bring out some of the recessed details and some dry brushing to uh, show off some of the high the raised detail, but 
you know, those are fairly basic techniques. Pre-shading in a, in, a, in a cockpit like this, you wouldn't really be able to notice anything. Um, so there wouldn't be a really a huge amount of, of uh, there wouldn't really be a major, that much point in doing it. Um, besides, like I said, I'm just trying to stick with the basics. Not make it too complicated, not make it too hard on, uh, on builders who are, you know, trying to follow along for the first time. Um, as it is, though, um, she's ready to be, uh, uh, to have some detail work done to it. Um, I painted also the, uh, the seat. I mentioned earlier that it's supposed to be, um, a shade of red. I can't remember what shade of red off the top of my head. But that's actually just the cushion, while the frame itself is the same, uh, German gray as the rest of the cockpit. Um, though I'm happy to have left it out, because it will make painting the cushion quite a lot easier. As it is for now, uh, that's basically all the airbrushing I'm going to have to do um, for everything save for the uh, the nose weight, which I still have to paint again. Um, so uh, next up I'll be talking a little bit about uh, some detail painting um, and uh, some paint effects.